This is a Bitcoin daily chart. This is a gift. If you're a Bitcoin holder, a crypto holder, if you're just in the space in general, tracking price, tracking the cycles, this chart is a gift. The structure that is setting up in this bull market right here is something that is 100% necessary, but is incredibly helpful in determining what's going to happen next in this cycle. Before we dive into the short-term price movement of Bitcoin, what to anticipate, what I'm looking for on this Bitcoin chart, I do want to zoom out. I want to zoom out on the monthly and kind of go over a couple of things. So please hit the subscribe, hit the like on your way in, and let's just jump into it. I posted just a typical zoom out on Bitcoin post on X with a monthly chart, and I got a comment. Somebody basically said, Dan, what's the typical time frame from having to BTC price peak? I think it's always good to kind of get a pulse check on the zoomed out, to get a pulse check on the, I guess, the cycles. Where are we in this cycle? Because you zoom out on a monthly and it's kind of like, man, it doesn't look as crazy as when you start zooming in on the charts, the volatility of it all, right? It looks very, there's just a really nice flow and movement to it. So what I want to do is I want to answer his question first. How long typically from Bitcoin having to market peak? So I want to go back and I want to plot this data in real time. So 2012 to the bull market peak, 365 days, all the way back there in that cycle. And then we have this cycle after 2016 having to bull market peak, we're looking at 518 days. Next cycle, 2020 having to bull market peak, that second peak, 549 days. So check it out, 365 to 549 days. Let's just call it for, let's, for 450 days or something like that. So Bitcoin halving, which we're basically weeks away from it right now, I want to just put it at 450 days, right? So right around there. This is speculative. This is kind of taking at a glance some averages of previous cycles. That's one piece of data. And it's a really good question that Frank over there next had because I think keeping these things in mind throughout the cycle, are it's incredibly important, at least for me as I'm tracking the cycles and trying to anticipate what's going on. How long, how long will the bull cycle last if we're going to continue upside? Now, there's another piece of data I want to mention, and that is this, these, these little yellow rectangles that you see here. This is a bull market door indicator that I talk about all, all the time. It's a bull market high to bear market low, lower high Fibonacci resistance area. It's Bitcoin just breaking that area. If you watch my channel, you know, because I talk about it nonstop. Every cycle, Bitcoin has done this after the Bitcoin halving, right? This is the first cycle Bitcoin's made that move before the halving. But that's another piece of data that I, I want to kind of bring into play besides just Bitcoin halving to all-time high. I want to know bull market doors being broken to all-time high. What does that look like, right? So if we look at this all the way back in 2013, the bull market doors being broken to all-time high, Bull market top, we're looking at around 273 days or so. And then if we go to the next cycle from Bitcoin bull market doors really being broken to all-time high, we're looking at around 300 days. We go to the next cycle, this last bull cycle that we had, November 2020, I remember it very well, Bitcoin breaking those bull market doors to that second peak, 365 days. Now, if we take the average of those uh, data points, and we say, you know, from bull market doors being broken, let's take it from right there to, let's say, right around here, 300 days, kind of trying to take a, a conservative average of all of those just at a glance, we have now a range. We have a range of January 2025 to July 2025. That is taking previous cycles and how, lo how long a Bitcoin bull market lasted, whether it's from having or from that bull market door indicator. And we have this range. And I, and I really need to save this or bookmark this, this chart because this is something I think we should revisit. Because we, we, we bring into play not only just that data, we start bringing into play other pieces of data. For instance, an RSI, right? This is a monthly RSI. Right now, Bitcoin taking a little bit of a cool off, a little bit of a break, right? If we look at all the way back here as Bitcoin was breaking the bull market doors in 2017, kind of got a similar move there. Point is, by looking at this chart, okay, we're anticipating potentially this continued bull market, right? New all-time highs for Bitcoin and for crypto. Well, look how much room is still left on this RSI if we're looking at previous cycles, right? When Bitcoin was topping out, right? There's a lot of room left on the monthly. 
And then we go over to a weekly and we can see a very similar thing happening in terms of, well, Bitcoin is just kind of just broke those bull market doors. We're just above it. We're at that indicator around having. Here's last cycle when Bitcoin is after having just above that bull market door indicator. Well, RSI, similar area kind of on the charts right now cooling off. But we have this range that we can say if Bitcoin is going to top out, right, in that that range that we charted, January 2025 to, to July 2025. What are some things we could look for as potential indicators? I think a really helpful one is on the weekly chart. If you look at last cycle through, through Bitcoin, when it's making those bull market highs, all the way to this peak, really, you see this kind of falling momentum, right? I think that's something we can monitor. And right now, that's just something we have to track like on a, on a weekly basis, basis to see what happens. Right now we're consolidating, but what happens next? If Bitcoin continues to the upside, whether it's after some more consolidation to the downside, but if Bitcoin on this weekly continues to the upside on price, right? We start hitting new highs at some point in the next weeks or months. What is the weekly oscillator doing? Is it putting in a new high, a higher high? That's, that's good if it does. Or is it going to already start to put in a lower high on the weekly? right? And we start getting that bearish divergence. That could just be a signal, right? In terms of Bitcoin from a momentum perspective is slowing down. And we keep these things in mind as we do evaluate that kind of range that we've identified on this, on this monthly chart. So this is some data I, I do want to save. I want to remember this video because I think throughout this cycle, it's, it's helpful. Now, as we zoom in on the charts, obviously, I'm somebody that likes to, to watch the technicals on the zoomed in as well. The zoomed out is really where it's important on the macro to get a sense of where we are and the cycles. But the zoomed in, since I'm watching crypto, I'm involved in the crypto space daily, I'm always watching price. So I want to know what's going on. And the purpose of this isn't to predict the next move, but it's to visualize the next move. And I said it's a gift at the beginning of the video, this, this structure, because it is. When we get structure, we get necessary cooling off if we want to get continued highs, number one. But number two, structure is just a really useful visualization tool in an environment where we escape some volatility, right? Bitcoin, there's no structure. It becomes very unknown. But we start getting structure. It becomes way easier to take a, take a break, a breather, and anticipate certain things. So here's a structure. It's a symmetrical triangle. And Bitcoin, in just such Bitcoin fashion, was overextended for moving averages. We've talked a lot about this. Overextended, it's just cooling down. It's pulling back into the 20 in green, the 50-day moving average in blue. It's right in between that area as we're getting the structure. And Bitcoin right now just above the 20-day. Interestingly enough, it's a cool pattern. I, I, I would say symmetrical triangles are probably one of my favorite patterns. But we know, based on data that I've tracked for like over six years now, and what I've learned is right around 70, 75% to the apex, we're, we're getting a breakout on these triangles, right? It can happen sooner or later, but that's kind of an average, I would say. Look at what is also kind of at the apex of the triangle. It's the Bitcoin halving. And, and that's kind of an exciting thing as we have this structure to track on the short term. But let's talk about some targets and some pricing, uh, price action movements and resistance and support. First things first. Target to the upside is around $90,000 on the symmetrical triangle. To the downside is around fifty dollars to $51,000. Now, the, again, this isn't to predict, but here's what I'll be watching for. And I, I want to make, make a little bit of a note. We broke out of this massive rising wedge that you see here. We broke out of that area back in February. And this is important for two reasons, upside and downside. It's important to upside because the target to the upside is 85,000, right? So if Bitcoin's going to make a breakout on the way to 90,000 out of the symmetrical triangle, $85,000 target is there still. The other reason it's important for downside is this. We did get the breakout out of that rising wedge, right? But what happens often before hitting targets to the upside? Often there are throwbacks to the pattern itself. So if you look at the target out of the symmetrical triangle, there's a target down there to the like lower trend line the apex area of that rising wedge. So we could have you having a throwback right to the bull market doors that you see there on the screen, right to the apex of this rising wedge. We could have a massive consolidation for Bitcoin going into halving. If we look at the Bitcoin weekly chart, 
That wouldn't be the first time. We go back to 2017, Bitcoin was breaking those bull market doors and throwing right back to the apex, right? And, and you can see Bitcoin potentially putting in a very similar play, breaking down into the apex right at that 20-week moving average. That's in play, everybody, going into having. just want to throw that out there. So that's a move on the shorter term to anticipate for, some volatility before continuing in the bull market. This is something that has happened before. Now, if we get this continued bullish momentum for Bitcoin, the bullish hype for Bitcoin and crypto, and, and what I'm talking about here really does, this is a roadmap for crypto. It's not just Bitcoin, but if we get that bullish momentum, this is the, this is the move going into having. Maybe we get a bullish move, right? Upside uh, resistance, upper trend line, right around 70,000 to 70,500. Let's just call it 70, 71,000. And then lower trend line support area, confluent with the 50-day moving average right now, right around $64,000. Those are the areas that I'm just going to be watching, monitoring. Bitcoin could kind of make a move to the upside, upper trend line in today, tomorrow, the next day, and then actually start falling back down into the, into the mid-60s, right? Testing the lower trend line. So these are something, this is something that we'll track going into the apex of the triangle, going into Bitcoin having, but at least we have something to track. And we have these visualization tools just so that we can sit here and anticipate both scenarios. Am I ready for this? Am I ready for this? At the end of the day, that is a very simple question that I'm always striving myself to answer. Not trying to predict what happens. I'm very simply just trying to visualize the, the possibilities and just answer the question, am I cool with it? And that's why I do these videos. And this is me just tracking my, my crypto journey. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, everybody. Please hit the subscribe, hit the like, turn notifications on. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.